Good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And glad that we're able to be here. And ask your prayers for us as we try to uh, teach the lesson. And we pray that you will uh, get a blessing out of it this morning. We want to go to the book of St. John this morning in chapter 20. We want to read a little bit here. And we're going to study some in the second Corinthians. John chapter 20, and let's see where we want to start here, somewhere in here. All right, in chapter, uh, in chapter uh, verse 17, I would like to start there. This is concerning uh, Mary and Jesus and what he had told her to, not to do. Uh, after he had appeared to her and uh, she didn't recognize him and uh, then she did recognize him and uh, Jesus said unto her in verse 16 Mary and she turned herself and said unto him Rabboni which is to say master uh, Jesus said unto her touch me not so evidently she had started towards Jesus and there's a there's a reason for all of this that he said to her, and uh, I've got such a blessing uh, out of trying to study this uh, this past few days. But anyway, we will read a little bit more. I, uh, he says, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father, and go and your father, and go to my, my God and to your God. Now notice, I want you to see the, one of the reasons why that he said what he did here was to fulfill the scripture because he had told her to, the, to, to, to talk to the disciples and give them this message. But notice again here that he told her not to touch him. Now, I was thinking along these lines, why, why would he say this to her knowing that he had known her for several years, and evidently she had washed his feet or she had touched him some, and he made no no reason for this, I mean, for to say don't do this. But notice here in this particular place, he told her, he says, don't touch me. Now, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, spoke to my heart, and listen, this is, this is what I understand about this is, that when Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, the sins of the world was upon him. Mm -hmm. And when when he died, he he before he died, he had a glorified body and a glorified spirit, and there was no sin within Jesus Christ. But the sins of the world was upon Jesus Christ. And this was what, one of the reasons why that God turned his back or he looked away because Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus was there with all the sins of the world and God could not look upon sin and so he turned his face from him, deserting him or just leaving him because he could not look upon sin. Right. Now, after Jesus had died, and after he had resurre was resurrected, his responsibility was to go to heaven where that God was and to make the atonement for the sins of the world uh, before God. And here we see him as he says to Mary, Mary, don't touch me. Now, it wasn't that Jesus... Uh, would have been uh, was in any way uh, mad at her or anything like this but the thing of it is that touch would have stained Jesus to the point that were that he could not make the atonement for the sins of the world because in his death and all he died for the sins of the world mm -hmm. and and of course in Romans there it says the wages of sin is death and, and Jesus died that death 
But I believe this morning that why, why he said that was because that that touch would have defiled him in some way before that he would not have been capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. And so we see this right here, and, and, uh, and uh, here Mary went and told the disciples. Now, I want to read over here in verse 26 again. After the resurrection, after, and after eight days again, his disciples were within the within and Thomas with them then came Jesus then came Jesus the door being shut and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you uh, and and before this Jesus had appeared and they had seen him and they told Thomas about this but thou in verse 27 then said he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hand and reach hither my hand and thrust it into thy side and be not faithful, faithless to, but believe it. Now, in, in this in this year, we want to go back and just uh, 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 I just want to read this scripture if I can for that uh, in verse 21 I read, then said Jesus to them again peace be unto you. This is when he returned after his resurrection. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whose, whosoever sins ye remit, they shall be remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they shall be, they are retained. But Thomas, this is what I wanted to try to get to, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Demas, was not with them, when Jesus came, the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now listen, this is this is the natural, the natural way that the flesh Things. Right. The flesh has got to see it with their eyes. But now listen. That was during, that was under the law also. And we have now a greater way uh, of seeing things. And that is by faith through, and grace. We see it through the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we want to, we want to show you this this morning in verse 27. Uh, then said he to Thomas, read, well, he finally read this, and Thomas answered and said unto him, in verse 28, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Now, here we are this morning, and we, I can safely say this morning, that we have not seen Jesus Christ right. in a bodily figure with our fleshly eyes. We have seen him through faith, and we have believed on him, Jesus Christ, that died for our sins. We have seen him, but not through our eyes. And this is why uh, I want to read something else to you this morning over in the book of First, Second Corinthians. If you would, you can turn there with me in chapter five, and verse. Let me see what I wrote down here. I think I wrote it down. Five. I think it's five. Now look, at, look at verse four in the in chapter five of Second Corinthians. For we are. For we that are in this tabernacle, talking about our flesh, do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but we would be, let me read it again, being burned, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality which is death might be swallowed up of life. And Amen. so this is this is speaking of 
we, we, we mourn within this flesh through this spirit and we mourn that we would be clothed with something different from what we what we see and Amen. that is a glorified body we mourn for that we groan for that we long for that and we serve our Savior Jesus Christ and our God of heaven knowing that one day this will happen but not now and so as long as we have life within this flesh we we have this groaning going on within Amen. us and we're looking forward <coughs> to that day that when we will have a glorified body so now notice now now he notice in verse 5 now he that hath wrought or worked uh and this this word oh uh wrought means to work or to form or to shape or to fashion us for the self same thing is god who also has given unto us the earnest of the spirit amen now this 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 word earnest uh and and we can use it in different forms but i i got a, a some out of the dictionary but the earnest is is money or anything that is given as an assurance or a promise or a pledge or a token as part of the commodity bargained for or a down payment jesus christ is our down payment jesus christ is the one that went and made it possible for us to inherit eternal life and also you could use uh the the the, the spirit our spirit as 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 a as a earnest it's because it is the thing that is staying within us this flesh and it is uh it is the thing that that is uh, uh trying to keep us in the right direction and serve god but anyway it, it, it it's a thing that is given to us this spirit and he calls it here the earnest of the earnest of the spirit and so it's or it's a part of the spirit that it's in us that is a, a, a is a is a thing that that freezes us or it holds us until the the full debt is paid if you and i hope that i'm not getting this confused with, or making the confusion but there this earnest is is something very important to we should realize that there has been something done for us this morning to keep to keep us in place until the finished product if you would because one day one day when when this is all over with we're going to die and then the lord jesus christ is going to come back and, and or he's going to call us and we're going to come forth a glorified body and the complete uh if you would this uh commodity or this complete thing will be complete and then it just won't be half spirit that's that's saved and half of the body that's sinful and the warfare that goes on and all of these things but this is what he is talking about here when he says that he has worked or he has uh, fashioned us for the self same thing again is god who also has given unto us the earnest of the spirit therefore we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in this body in this flesh we are absent from the lord and we cannot we cannot be in the presence of god in this flesh we have a faith that reaches out there through that faith we can talk to god through that faith we can talk to the lord jesus christ through that faith we can receive the holy spirit talking to us but as far as seeing him, touching him uh, physically or anything, we can't do it because listen, we're not we're not we're not capable of doing it. We're right. in a sinful body this morning, and this is something that we uh, as Christians need to understand more than what we do because listen, we've got a, we've got a warfare on us. Amen. We've got a warfare that that Paul Paul. He understood it. He understood it. And listen, he 
he had this experience with God, and God spoke to him, and 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 Ananias told him what his what he was going to be. And listen, he knew more, but he said he said to him uh, in, in the scriptures, "Oh wretched man that I am." And listen, that's how I find myself most of the time. Right. Oh wretched man that I am, uh, because listen to the time when I get when I get to where I can try to study and 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 read the word and all this. Hey, here comes Satan with all his imps, and, the, and and he's always using his flesh to get my mind off old John on something or another and, and interfere with me. Mm -hmm. And listen, we have a war for her. And don't get upset and don't get discouraged when this old body just wants to do something that it shouldn't do or make you think something that's wrong or, or make you think. Because, listen, we have this war for her. And so we can, might as well as be content and say, well, I'm going to do the best I can with the help of God and fight and, and try to keep the keep this body under control because that's, that's the thing that we need to do is try to keep this body under control. So now he says here, notice, uh, in verse, uh, verse uh, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Now, this morning, if you're not com if you're not confident or you're not really, really ready and, and willing to be out of this body, then you're missing a blessing. Right. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm, that's as far as I'm going, you're just missing a blessing. Because, listen, to be absent from this body is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and to be with God in heaven is far greater than anything that you'll ever experience down here. If nothing else, you'll get to look upon the face of Jesus Christ, the man, the person that died for Amen. you. And you can see you'll be in the presence of God also. And uh, there's there's nothing there's nothing down here to compare. There's there's no, there's nothing there's nothing in this world that you can pile up in this building or uh, the monies or the uh, anything that you can that you can say in words that is better than being with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing. And of course, hey, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to talk to that flesh every day about this. Because old flesh, one of these days, it's going to be resurrected, a glorified, sinless body. Then, and only then, will your spirit and this flesh come together and be one and be happy in the Lord. Because Amen. if we went to heaven like this, like we are now, then there would be sin in heaven. And listen... Uh, it would be the first thing we'd be trying to do is overpower God. Mm. Just like the devil did. Now listen, you think that's silly. Well, no, it ain't. Because you look and see what what became the devil was an angel, a perfect being, a creative being that was perfect. But yet, listen, he got fouled up some way or another, and I don't know, but he, and, and he wanted to take the power of, of God. And so that's the thing that we would do. So this morning, don't don't uh, don't get don't give up when this flesh starts aggravating you and and, and, and causing you problems and trouble and things like this. Uh, just just keep you cool and say, Lord, be with me and help me because it's going to do it. Your flesh and my flesh is the same flesh, right? And it's going to do it. And I don't. I, I mean, uh, people can say what they want to, and that they they don't ever have this problem. But listen, I, I, I you know what? I think they're missing missing something somewhere. So, but anyway, uh, this is it. Now, now look in verse nine. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. And this this morning is our reasoning for trying to live for the Lord and to uh, serve Him and to read His Scripture and to be a, a testimony for Him and to praise Him and all of this. It says here, wherefore we labor, 
That's our labor in the flesh this morning, and the flesh don't want to do it. But the Spirit says, yes, you will, you will, you will, you will. Because this morning, if it was left up to the flesh, there wouldn't be a soul here. Wouldn't be, right. There wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a body here because they have something else they want to do. But listen, this, this Spirit encourages us, and the Holy Spirit encourages our spirit, and we plunge along and go and, and do what. So he says here, wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Right. That everyone may receive the things done in this body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And so this morning, this flesh, this flesh that we have, it's going to die. And it, it's going to die unless the Lord comes back and we leave out and it changes as it goes up. But it's going to, it's going to, it's going to give an account for everything that it's done. And so we might as well expect that to happen. So now, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. And so we, we need to manifest the Lord, we need to trust the Lord, we need to completely trust the Lord because we sometimes we get in, in, in a shape for that we don't we don't pray like we want to, we don't do the things that we do, and it's because of the weakness of our flesh. And so sometimes it takes a little something from the Holy Spirit, sometimes it takes something else. But listen, the Lord will draw us back and and strengthen us and help us and Amen. remind us of these things. Now, for we we commend not ourselves again to you, but give you an occasion to glory on your own behalf, to glory on our behalf, that we may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. And so he's asking for the he's asking for them to help him as Paul he's asking them to pray for him to to glory and to help him and and that when he has the opportunity to witness to someone he be a, he'll be a help to them he'll be a, uh, a help uh, in the ways that would be uh, point them to Christ and this morning that's what our needs are is that we pray for one another and uphold one another and help one another to to be more ready to offer help to anyone or to uh, in any way we can help them. We need, we need to be in this condition. So for uh, notice here, notice again in verse 13, for whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God or whether we be sober it is for your cause for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge if one died for all, then we're all dead. Amen. And that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto them themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth, know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. And that, this morning, is talking about the spirit. Uh, the flesh is not a new creature, but the, the spirit is. He says, your old things are passed away. And people, that's, that, there's no better words than that. Old, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given up to us the ministry of reconciliation, or bringing into harmony, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. 
Amen. This morning we are ambassadors. And you think that you've got a, a people in Congress that have ambassadors in certain countries? You think they've got a high job? Listen, they ain't got nothing. Right. We've, got, we've got a high job this morning. We're an ambassador to Christ. And we have the opportunity, we have the responsibility to talk to other people, to tell other people, and, and help them in any way we can. So he said here, uh, we're ambassadors for Christ as though, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray to you in, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, Jesus Christ, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Amen. And so this morning, that's our lesson. That's uh, some of the things that I, 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 I was blessed uh, with. Uh, and I know it's a lot of, quite a bit of reading, but uh, I can't think of anything else that I can do that is any better than Amen. God's word this morning. And it's a, it's a blessed it's a blessed book, and listen, uh, this is our this is our this is our guide. Amen. This is our law. This is this is what we depend upon this morning, and so this is this is good stuff, and it's uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and I, I thank the Lord every time that I understand uh, uh, anything from Him, and the Holy Spirit speaks to my soul. So we thank you this morning, and I hope it's blessed you in some way. Thank y'all. Amen.